Do you guys think the trails will be open? <laughs> There's no <laughs> snow! What's going on, boys and girls? Welcome to heaven and the 23 season. I'm just out here with uh, Jesse. I've been up in Cochrane for a week, uh, just getting trails together, getting them all set up, and uh, it's been awesome. Kenny uh, has given us the morning off, so we're uh, trying to get some miles on the sleds and check out the trails, see how everything's setting up. As you can see, tons of snow uh, overnight. We probably got just in the last two days, I think we probably got about 30 centimeters of snow. So there's lots and lots of snow out here to work with. I just groomed this last night and you can't even tell. <laughs> it's true, but uh, yeah, we're just going to do a quick ride. We're on the uh, A West. We're going to head towards Smooth Rock Falls. Uh, and this is our first ride of the season, our first official ride of the season anyway. And certainly looking forward to... Uh, Snowmobiling, hopefully you guys are all getting ready for Christmas and uh, getting your sleds together for the holiday season. And uh, I'm sure we're going to see lots of traffic up here coming uh, coming up next week on Boxing Day. Oh. What's happening, when Jess? The trails, gonna be open? <laughs> the trails are open. There's lots of snow. The trails are open. <laughs> yeah, trails will be good. We've had actually a really cool time this year already. Uh, Jesse's been doing a ton of grooming from the minute we literally got up here. I think it was like that afternoon we got up. Kenny's like, here are the keys. Go groom. Okay. So we st there was no rest. No, you know, we've had literally four hours sleep every night because we've been at it all day uh, and all night. <laughs> exactly. Burning at both ends of the candle, as Jesse likes to say. So, All right, guys. Here we go. Honestly, so excited for uh, sledding again this year. It's great to be back out on the trail. Super happy Jesse's up. Uh, he's been able to obviously get off uh, for winter break. So just like every other year, we're starting off in Cochrane. We've had a full week of non-stop trail work. I mean non-stop. I'm actually really super sore today. I've been doing non-stop signage and Jesse has been grooming. I think he's up to like 90 hours already this week for grooming. So that's been pretty cool. He's actually been teaching me. I did my uh, operator's course this year and uh, he's been teaching me how to groom. So I had a chance to get to try it. We got another groomer operator in training over here. The sled addicts are really becoming groom addicts, aren't we, Mike? I think so, making another <laughs> channel. Look at that trail you're making there. Awesome. How are you liking the Piston Bully 400? It's pretty good. Once you get used to like how to steer and stuff and the throttle, it's pretty easy actually. Big thanks to uh, Kenny and the Polar Bear Club. I've done uh, you know a lot of signage this week too, which uh, we'll show you guys as we're still working to get some of the road crossings signed. So it's just been a fun week overall. And like I said, we really haven't done much riding. This is our first ride. So it's our first official ride out here. So we're just gonna go for a little rip today to Smooth Rock Falls, probably grab some breakfast and then head back to uh, Cochrane. And we'll hang out and probably do uh, a little bit more signage work later. Trails are absolutely perfect. So nice to be back up here. We got this brand new 850 XRS, which we're also really excited about and been working really well. We've only got a couple hundred K on it. So we're trying to get it out of break-in mode today. That's the goal. And we're gonna uh, also be putting together an initial thoughts video for you guys, just to give you a little bit more detail on the sled and just some of our initial impressions. You guys know we love these uh, 850 XRS Renegades already, so. This one is definitely a step up compared to what uh, everybody's used to with the Gen 4s. All right, we're just coming up to a stop here. So you guys will notice for anybody who rides the Cochrane area, you'll see now uh, we've actually got some new uh, signage. So those green signs, which I've done at every major road crossing, 
are, uh, are awesome. So if you're using, especially if you're using a GPS or an app and you're coming to a stop, you'll actually know exactly where you are. So that's pretty, uh, pretty sweet. Yeah, for those of you who speak French, Jesse and I had no idea. We're like, why do we have two of the same thing? And then we realized, okay, Chemin means road. So, <laughs> so uh, we kind of were like, well, we're very confused when we saw the uh, when we saw the signs initially. So again, that's up to the Abitibi Canyon. So you guys, uh, again, for those who ride this area. That trail will basically take you right up uh, to the base camp. You'll see that right now, the sign here, the bottom will tell you if it's open or closed. So obviously uh, it's not open yet, it's closed. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna make our way down this way to the Frederick House River. Oh, look at that, Jess, I see a trail closed sign here. <laughs> so once again, we screw up here and there, but uh, this trail is open, so we're gonna we're gonna take this with us on our way back. Again, I don't know if uh, you know. I know there's a lot of guys from Ontario that watch our channel, and if you uh, if you haven't been riding and you're local, or even if you can get up here, uh, Cochrane really is kind of the the pinnacle for snowmobiling uh, and trails in uh, in Ontario. This is all drifted out now, Jess. Sorry, your hard work, but. Yeah, Jesse groomed this last night and it's been all drifted and there's just tons and tons of powder on it. Let's see how deep this is. Oh, it's not too deep. There's a good amount of snow. Jess, hop off your sled. Show them how much snow there is. You're probably not that much there, but... On the side, it's all drifted out here. Yeah, so when you're in the bush, right, there's lots of snow, guys. Tons and tons of snow. It's up to his, almost his, his waist. So I actually just broke open this section of trail on the side of the road here the other day, but you can't see any of it because <laughs> of the amount of drifting snow and the plows aren't really helping. There's lots of powder in Cochrane. We get messages every day from guys. Are the trails going to be open? Are they going to have snow? Yes, they have snow. The trails are open. It's a usual year in Cochrane. The A trail will likely be open all the way to Hearst uh, by Boxing Day time. We actually, the A trail in Cochrane took a little bit longer to open, not because it wasn't ready, just because there was a section that had active logging. Oh, see, our trail work never stops. Let's fix this stop sign. Oh, looks better. Yeah, it's perfect weather conditions. It's going to get really cold the next couple of days to help maintain the trail while it gets a ridiculous amount of traffic. Cochrane is fully booked. There's over, I just found out the statistics, there's about 745 sledders coming to Cochrane. That's the estimation right now on uh, <laughs> Boxing Day or on the 26th or 27th. At peak, there'll be about 745 sledders, give or take. So the trails are gonna get pretty beat pretty quick, but if it, the weather stays cold, at least we'll be able to groom it and they'll sustain some traffic. No matter how cold it is though, the trails will still get beat up with that many sleds. Definitely gonna be a little bit of a slower ride today to Smooth Rock, just because of the amount of powder here. Still loving my Gen 4. Just because I'm in medical school now, it didn't really make sense for me to buy a new sled because I really won't have that much time to ride. Um, but this sled has, give or take, uh, about 13,000 K on it, and it's still running absolutely mint. I uh, took it to uh, Paps the other day just because I was riding and I noticed my belt wasn't sucking up, so I had a broken roller. First broken roller in 13,000 kilometers, so. Yeah, Mike was saying in my ear, first broken roller that we've ever had on a, on a 850 Skidoo with the P-Drive clutch. So just goes to show you how reliable they are. And yeah, we put a lot of kilometers on these sleds and we've had really good luck. So we're super impressed. But at 13,000 kilometers to have to replace my rollers is not that big of a deal. And sled's back on the trail.
And this is literally one of the first times I've ridden this sled since we got here. We get up here, and Kenny goes, here's the key, go groom. So I, I stop on the trail to take a video, and I get a message from him. Why are you stopping? Keep going. Don't stop. <laughs> but, um, yeah, go groom, go groom, don't stop. <laughs> we were like maniacs, as Mike likes to say, maniacs, for a couple days where uh, we literally would be out doing trail work all day and then get in the groomer at like 5 p.m. and get back at 3 in the morning and then 7 a.m. start again. <laughs> and after a couple days, we're like, okay, we need, to, we need to knock it up till, we need to have a little bit longer of a sleep just so we could sustain ourselves and not burn out. But yeah, I've been riding those Scandics and you forget how much power these A50s have when you're riding 900 Aces that are non-turbo, like these are the old Scandics. And I got on my sled and I almost uh, almost flew off the sled in the parking lot of the Westway. <laughs> so that would have been funny if Mike caught that on video. But yeah, as Mike was saying before, we've added a nice initiative for this year. We're adding these uh, intersection signs. If you ever have an emergency, you know exactly uh, where you are. Uh, it kind of reminds me last year when I was grooming in Barrie, every intersection had uh, a label like that to tell you exactly what road you're at. So I think it's a great idea. It just makes everything clear. And the reality is Cochrane and District 15 have some of the best trail signage in the province. And this just keeps making it better and better. You gotta have clear signage. You don't want sledders getting lost. Like I have a GPS, so usually I can figure it out if the signage isn't great. But if the signage is great, I don't even have to look at the GPS. So it's definitely a, a nice thing to have. Up here, you're never worried. You can go all the way from Cochrane to Hearst. You, you won't get lost. So this section right here that we're on is gonna have active logging all season. So the trail's gonna be on the right side. But as you can see, they haven't, uh, they're not logging today because of the amount of snow that fell. But the trail, there's a big blue sign up there at the stop sign that says, uh, sledders, please stay on the, on the trail to the side of logging roads. So the trail's gonna be about here and then the logging trucks will be on the left. And then up here in a second, there's a, a, a detour that's gonna be active, I believe for at least the next month, uh, because the, uh, to the right, that's gonna be actively logged. So I'll show you guys here in a second. So the A trail used to go um, to the right up here. And now with, this, with the logging, it's gonna be detoured. See, read that sign, it says no snowmobiles on logging road. So the trail goes here now. There's a detour sign. Log haul in progress. We're trying to be super clear. We don't want sledders going down there. The last thing we want to hear is the sledder getting hit by a logging truck. So the trail goes here and then it reconnects with the main section of the A trail at about kilometer 10. And then you uh, keep going up to Greenwater Park or to the Greenwater Pit Stop where we meet Arctic Riders Snowmobile Club uh, as usual. That hasn't changed. But yeah, while we're waiting for the Frederick House River uh, to get enough ice, like right now it has 13 inches of ice, so plenty for sleds. But as Mike mentioned, we need about 18 for the groomer. So until we get to that point, instead of wasting two hours just walking the groomer around Highway 11, Arctic Riders was kind enough to uh, cover our section. So they're gonna be grooming all the way from Smooth Rock to the Frederick House River on top A for us until we can cross that river. So that will really help us out and then we can have our two groomers focused on uh, the trails around town because they're gonna get beat really quick with the amount of traffic that's coming. Well, I just turned around to come back because I knew I, uh, I'd lost Jesse. Turns out he got buried in like four feet of snow. It was like up to his windshield. And uh, so he tries to get this thing out by himself, gets it out and as he's getting it out, he falls over basically over his handlebars again and then finally uh finally got it buried i think we got a pick here so we'll show you guys it's been a long time since i've been up here and actually been able to get fresh tracks just because it's usually so busy here we're just coming into the logging area now here but uh it's cool because like i said there's hardly anybody really out today i think everybody's sort of getting ready for christmas and no one's come up yet, so most people will come up on Boxing Day. So we kind of have the trails basically to ourselves. There's one other uh, couple, I think, that's just ahead of just past us. But uh, 
pretty cool to be riding in the fresh stuff because we really never get a chance to do that. And you just burn way more fuel just trying to push through this stuff. Look at all the beautiful snow. We're just packing down this trail, making our way to Smooth Rock Falls. And just uh, tons, I think more snow than we thought actually fell overnight. This is literally just overnight because we were, I ran this trail yesterday on the Scandic out to uh, Greenwater and there was certainly not this much snow. So we're just packing it down to make it easier for the groomer to go through which will probably start uh, tomorrow again, grooming operations. What the f did I do? All right, well, we just stopped at the uh, green water warm-up shack just for a bit of a break, realizing that it's actually much colder than we think just because the wind is blowing pretty, uh, pretty significantly. So Cochrane 40 clicks that way, we're gonna head to Smooth Rock Falls to get some breakfast. Well, I guess it's lunch now. And it's probably, I think it's about another 30K to get to Smooth Rock Falls. So I'm trying the uh, Mission Helmet again today. My first ride with it, I really wasn't uh, impressed with it. I don't know what was going on, but I was getting a really cold chin. I rode it in like minus 18 one of the first days we were here and my chin was freezing. I, so I'm not sure what I did differently. In any case, I'm wearing it again today just to keep uh, messing around with it and I absolutely love it. It's working awesome now. Now I did put the breath box back in. So when I first tried it, I used it without the breath box and I had it plugged in uh, with an electric cord. Today I have it with the breath box and that's what most guys were saying is run it with the breast with the with the breath box and then you don't need the uh, the cord so that's pretty cool i'm not using the cord and this thing stays unfogged as soon as you get going it's uh it's perfectly clear so it is what everybody has sort of been saying about it which is like you literally can run this thing and not worry about an electric visor cord which is pretty awesome I've got the uh, comm system hooked up, so we're running the Cardos. I've got the Cardo Edge on this one, and um, you know I can hear Jesse perfectly. He says he can hear me really well too, so so that's good. He he's running also the uh, you know the previous version Cardo Pack Talk Bold, and we have them paired, and they work perfectly together. So no issues there whatsoever. So everything's working great. Um, so far, so good. Like really, really impressed. I, I was nervous because I spent a lot of money on this helmet, plus I have a carbon, right? But uh, it's working really well. The one thing we are having some issues with is the GoPros as usual. So we, even though we've got the cold weather batteries, we've had a couple of issues with them today because again, the wind is blowing, which is what's making it cold. The temps aren't like crazy cold, but the wind has been making it, uh, you know, the wind chill has been probably, I got to guess around minus 20 with the wind chill, maybe even colder. So and we're excited to bring you guys lots of video content again this year from some of our, uh, our rides that we've got planned. And yeah, it's gonna be awesome. We're getting excited. Our buddies are coming up for, you know, kind of a four day, four day usual ride up here where uh, we're all staying. Well, we're split up a little bit. Some of us are staying at the Westway. Some of us are staying at, uh, the best western in town. Looking forward to eating at JR's. We've already been there a couple times, our favorite place in town to eat. So if you guys get up here riding, make sure you go to check out JR's barbecue. They got a wicked menu. I swore I haven't had that much on the menu because I always order ribs, but the other night we Jesse and I had fish and chips and they were awesome. So we were we're making our way to uh, Smooth Rock Falls and we're gonna eat at a place called Ellie's Bistro. And we were supposed to go for breakfast. It's looking more like it's gonna be a lunch, which is fine. There goes Jesse. There goes Jesse, ruining my Renegade XRS. <laughs> nice. Whoa. Nice. 
Nice. Okay, well that's our first ride in Cochrane, Ontario. First trail ride of the season. We just, uh, we're sitting here in the Greenwater Pit Stop, uh, which is the halfway point between Cochrane and Smooth Rock. And uh, we're going to head back to Cochrane, go uh, get changed so we look like civilized human beings, <laughs> and have a Christmas dinner with our friends in the, from the north. Yeah, it's been a, a really great first ride. This is uh, one of our favorite stops. We love uh, coming to Greenwater. We just made a little bit of a fire. So hopefully the next folks that are through here get some warmth. Yeah, we're testing Mike's uh, fire starters. <laughs> Not so good so far. <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys riding along with us uh, for the first ride of the season. We've got lots more planned. Yeah, on the new 850 XRS, which has been awesome. If you like that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Sled Addicts YouTube channel, where we release content on everything snowmobiling. Also, hit that bell icon so you can be updated every time we release new videos.